The first thing I'd like to point out is that this is an asynchronous online course in which the discussion section is going to be uh, not having any live Zoom classes or meetings. So there's not going to be any designated lectures at any particular time on any particular day. This is for the discussion section only. In the discussion section, however, there will be recorded video instruction and other video resources, as well as assign reading assignments and other practice assignments for you so that you can learn the material that you are expected to cover in this class. Now, the lab section is synchronous online. This means that every Friday, you will be having one lab section with the lab instructor, Azar Chara. So you have a discussion instructor and you have a lab instructor. He and I will be working together to give you your final grades, but the lab grade is going to be done, lab grading is going to be done by Azar Chara. And of course, uh, with regard to the lab assignments, you will find them on your lab canvas course. So the pre-lab and the lab assignments for this lab course is going to be visible in the lab canvas course. The discussion section and the main material for the course is going to be visible to you on the, on the discussion canvas section. So you are going to have two canvas courses. Of course, in my discussion section, you will also see lab and pre-lab popping up, but you will not see a way to submit your lab on the discussion section, and that will be taken care of in the lab section. You may see some pre-lab and lab work for informational purposes, but for purposes of the lab, you will need to stay with your lab section. So I just wanted to make that clear, so you're not expecting expected to be available for a discussion lecture. Now, with regard to resources, we will be using building Java programs, chapters one to eight. If you're going to stay with CSC 20, then this is the same book that is going to get used uh, and we will be covering chapters six, uh, eight through 16 for the second part of Java programming, which is CSE 20. But in this course, we will be staying with one to eight. So let me show you what the book looks like. So if you go on to buildingjavaprograms.com, you will see and go on to the main page. This is what the latest section of the book looks like. And you have on the left navigation bar, you will have a breakup of all the topics. Now, this is really important because I will be staying with the book. The book is going to be required and I will be following it very closely. In fact, section by section. And when I go over the Canvas course, you will see that there's a direct link to the Canvas module uh, or the Canvas instruction for that week and the sections from the book. So for example, in week one, I will uh, designate that your reading is going to be 1.1 to 1.3. And this is directly out of the textbook. Now, what are the other features that are available to you? Some features that are available to you here are videos. If you click on video resources, then there's tons of videos that correspond to the sections from the textbook. And in, in your video instruction page or subsection, you will see that I have provided links to some of these Building Java Program videos. Building Java Programs is a long word, and usually I will say BJP. And, and when I say BJP, that means it's a reference to either the textbook section or to the video that's provided here. The other important uh, connection with regard to programming practice to this BJP system is the Practice It platform. This is an amazing free practice platform. 
and you will be expected to create a free account for yourself. For example, I'm going to log in here and let me show you what this looks like. And if I log in here, you have the option of selecting whichever book you have purchased. You could have purchased the fifth or the fourth edition. I'm fine with either, but let's go to the fifth edition. And as you can see, this says BJP5 Chapter 1. The prelabs, some of the prelabs that you're expected to do are going to be straight out of uh, the practice it. So it's, it would be a good idea for you to get your account right away if you don't have one and familiarize yourself with the self-check exercises and the primary exercises. So for example, you will see for every chapter, you will see a ton, as you can see, of self-check exercises which are meant to test your understanding of the material that's there in the textbook. And I would suggest to you to keep the textbook handy when you do the practice exercises. So you can read a section, practice the self-check exercises, and that is a great way to deepen your understanding of the material. And then there is also, in addition to the self-check, then there's exercises. So if I say, BJPSC 1.31. This refers to self-check give advice. So we are going to then be into uh, this particular self-check exercise. So this is what the exercise would look like. There would be a box for you to provide the solution and then there's a submission box. And as you can see, if there is an error, then uh, practice it will let you know if you are able to make the change and submit the correct answer then it will also indicate to you that you have completed that exercise successfully so this is an amazing kind of an auto graded or auto correcting which will give you an instant feedback on uh, your programming practice and that's a great way to know if you're on track or not got to the exercises If you, if you do your exercises correctly, you will see that on the index page, uh, Practice It gives you this green check saying that you have completed the exercise successfully. So let's go into this fight song. So there is a fight song exercise, which uh, you're expected to write. And I have completed the solution here and I'm going to submit it. And here, Practice it has run this through its own tests and you have be, and then we have been successful in writing the code that has produced the output that we expected to produce and therefore practice it is very happy with us and it has said that we have passed. Now this is a great platform and we are going to be using it all the way through CSC 20. Some of your lab exercises are also going to be assigned with this. The exams are also going to stay very close to the practice it exercises. So I would strongly urge you to uh, be very consistent with doing daily practice of the practice it exercises. Now, the other thing I'd like to point out is if you are asked to submit evidence that you have completed a certain exercise, you can just right click on this, save this as, um, just going to see if we can save this as a print as a PDF save as a PDF and this is going to save that page which which uh, indicates that you have completed those exercises and this is what you would need to submit for your pre labs or labs if you ask to submit evidence that you've completed your practice set self checks and your practice set exercises so let's go back to building Java programs and I'd like to show you some other useful supplements that are provided. Here is a list of all the PowerPoints which correspond to the chapter. So if you'd like to do some speed reading and use PowerPoints, then here are the PowerPoints that are provided to you. These are really amazing because they have, for example,
they have a step-by-step -step guidance and instruction which relates directly to the textbook to give further explanation of uh, how to do your programming or what are the features of that particular uh, programming structure and, and how to design and develop good programs. So I would definitely recommend using these PowerPoint slides. The other thing that I'd like to point out to you is that solutions are available. So for example, here, exercise solution self-check solutions for the fifth edition. So if you click into this, you will see that the solutions to the self-check exercises that are in practice, the self-check exercises here, the solutions to those are given here. Does this mean that you should copy and paste the solution? The answer is it's not going to help you. But what this means is that if you're stuck on any particular self-check exercise, then definitely it's worth your while to take a peek in here and see what the solution is uh, so that that again helps you to complete your understanding and move on. Of course, solutions are not given to the main exercises. And I would urge you not to share solutions if you have one, because these are meant to be to challenge your understanding and deepen your understanding of the material. So as you can see that the, there is a universe that's built around the building Java uh, textbook, it is really important that you get either the fourth or fifth edition and that you use the supporting material, i.e. the practice it platform and, and the PowerPoints, the videos, and all of the good stuff that's given to you. Uh, and that comes as a package. Now what I'd like uh, to do is, let's see if we have covered. Yes, so we have covered the textbook. We have covered uh, the practice it, uh, programming platform. And I would like to point out that uh, the IDE that you can use is JGRASP. Now, JGRASP, again, most of the exercises on practice it um, uh, on the practice on the BJP videos have been done using JGRASP. It's a very friendly starter ID. However, if you'd like to move to a more complicated industrial strength IDE like Eclipse or IntelliJ, you are free to do so. But in our class, we will stay with JGRASP uh, in the labs and in some of the demonstration exercises. I might use an online IDE called Replit. Uh, it's easy for me to post links, and therefore I stay with that. Uh, you are welcome to use that too. So JGRASP or Replit uh, is fine as starter IDEs. And in the Canvas course, there is a ton of instructions on how you can download uh, JGRASP and how you can get started on JGRASP. All right. So... Our course is divided into four modules. We have eight chapters, and we will be covering one chapter, roughly one chapter, every two weeks. We are going to have to go a little um, uh, speedily because we have roughly 15 weeks, and there's eight chapters for us to cover. Uh, so we may uh, need to pack in a little more, but uh, with all of the support that you have, I think we are going to be okay. So let me, um, and each module is four weeks long, which means uh, we will be covering two chapters in each module. And at the end of uh, two chapters, you will typically have an exam. In fact, there are roughly one or two programming assignments. So uh, you will have one programming assignment for chapter one. The second programming assignment is going to be chapter two. But sometimes, somewhere towards the middle or end, you may find that I'm combining chapters for, pro for programming assignments. So in the end, we may end up having five or six programming assignments and not eight programming assignments. They, uh, we may have three or four exams, um, depending on the time. And definitely, 
uh, you will have uh, weekly labs. Uh, so you will have three or four weekly labs per module. There will be a final exam and attending or passing all of these exams is important. Passing the final exam is mandatory. And I welcome you to take a look at the syllabus to go through the ins and outs of the grading procedures and policies. And in a minute, we'll jump into the Canvas course so that you can see where that's at. So here's some uh, details about. Now, how can you get the help that you need? Well, the first thing is watching all the lecture videos, including the Building Java program videos, reaching out to your teaching assistants and to me via email or via Zoom office hours, and also going on the peer support Discord server. And there is a link to this in your Canvas, and I would encourage you to join this immediately. And let me show you what that looks like. So when you, when you follow the link on your Canvas course, it says Student Help Forum, ask questions here, join the Student Discord support server. When you click the link, you're going to be taken into a Discord server that looks like this. This one, which with the Java coffee is your Discord server. And I've already posted a welcome announcement here. And you will be able to, in the general, let's say in the general um, channel, you can see how your peers have interacted in previous semesters. So this is the way you are also going to be able to uh, interact. And I will. Uh, for during the office hours, uh, which is Tuesdays and Thursdays, 3.30 to 4.30, I will be jumping into this Discord server to answer questions. All right, so let's go into the Canvas course. Your Canvas course is going to look, when you log in, this is what you're going to see. Uh, this is me, and here is information about how you can reach my office room if you need to see me in Zoom, um, I would suggest emailing me and making an appointment. Otherwise, the default is going to be the Discord server. And here's how you can click and go to my office room. So if so, you, you do not need to worry about how to find the Zoom, Zoom link. It's already here. And then if you click the start here, you will be taken on to the modules. And I would suggest not going into assignments but going into modules because that's where all your instruction is. Um, please go through all of these uh, topics that are given to you to get and help you get started. And you will find a copy of the syllabus right here. There's a chunked up syllabus here and there's a copy of the syllabus available to here. You can download it and read it. Now let's go back to Let's go back to the course and week one. This is typically what each module, each module is going to look like for every single week. There's going to be the number of the week, the duration. So typically assignments are going to be due uh, at, on this day. And this is the reading section from the textbook that you, that is going to get covered in this module. So week one, we are going to cover BJP 1.1 to 1.3. There is going to be an overview which tells you what are the topics that are going to be covered. Then if we go to the next, there's going to be, this welcome video is going to be saved here so that you can, uh, you can take a look at it and review it. So let me go back. When it says required video instruction, I'm expecting that you'll watch all these videos. Where I say recommended optional video, there's an excellent tutorial, YouTube, uh, YouTube tutorials that you can uh, that you can watch. Now, BJP Chapter One is the Building Java Programs videos that I pointed out to you on the BJP platform. When the VL1 and VL2, the, when you see the video lecture numbering, then you know that that's uh, a video that's been created by me. 
There is a ton of instructional materials here. For example, if you click into this, you will see PowerPoint slides, documentations on how to set up JGRASP, re review documents, and tons of stuff that I encourage you to look at. For that particular week, so the instructional material relates to instruction for that week. There's some practice that you can do here. And there's a to-do list, which means typically every week you will be doing reading, watching videos, doing a quiz, doing a pre-lab, doing a lab. Now remember, the pre-lab and lab are going to appear on the lab section. This is just for information purposes only. Here's the Discord server and here's the wrap-up. Now, you may ask where are the exams and the programming assignments? Well, if I go to week two, you can see that programming assignment chapter one has gotten assigned here. So week one, we start with chapter one. Week two, we finish chapter one. And when we finish chapter one, then the programming assignment for chapter one is given here, right? And then we move on to chapter two. The exam, your first exam, is going to be at the end. So here's programming assignment two. Your first uh, exam is going to be at the end of uh, four weeks when we have finished chapter one and chapter two, right? So we have finished module one, which consists of chapter one and chapter two, and then you will take an exam. So this is a, an overview of what your Canvas course looks like. And I'm going to just check and see if there's anything here that we've missed. So I will uh, complete this welcome video uh, by, by saying that I'm here to help you make this course a success. And please feel free to reach out to me and please stay on task. You will need to assign at least 10 hours per week. Uh, to be successful in this class and this 10 hours involves reading assignments, watching videos, attending the labs, doing the programming assignments uh, and doing the lab assignments. You may find that when you have, when you do your programming assignments, then uh, you may need more time. You may need to allocate more time. There are teaching assistants and graders for this course and they will be introducing themselves shortly. We will also have study sessions uh, depending on your need, uh, you are welcome to reach out to the lab instructor, to the teaching assistants, or to me, and we will be able to put together live Zoom study sessions, maybe just before an exam, uh, if you feel the need, uh, if you feel that uh, this is something important to you, we would be happy to do that as well. So welcome once again, and good luck with the class.